<coughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go through and talk about this uh, to fill in a few things that we didn't mention last night at our lesson. To start out, when I talk about a line of music, I'm talking about a unit of sound. Um, and it sounds like it's finished when you get to the end and you feel like, oh, okay, I'm moving on to the second line. Uh, for example, this one goes dum ba da 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 dum bum 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 ba da 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 dum bum bum. That's the end of the first line. On your paper, however, that is four measures that I just hummed. On the paper, there are five measures in that top line of written music. The reason is, when they write music on paper, they try to figure out how they can best use the amount of space that they have. They want to use as little space as possible because it costs less when you're making thousands of copies. Um, and also, they want it to be still be big enough for the person who is uh, using it to read it easily. So, the first four lines of this piece are actually on three lines of written music on the page. The first four measures are a line. You can draw a heavy um, measure line there to give you the idea that's a section. Then the next four measures, which is the first measure of the top written line, and the th first three measures of the next written line, those are the second line of the song. And so at the end of those four measures, you can put a heavy, heavy um, measure line to indicate to yourself that that's the end of the second line. Then the third line of sound would be the first two measures of the second line of written music. Those are actually the last two measures of that line. And then the two measures at the beginning of the third line of written music. Musicians say the word line and they seem to know what they're meaning, but you can see that it could be confusing. Um, and then the last four measures make up the last line of the sound of the first part. And you'll see that those four measures end with a repeat sign. So you'll play through the first part and then you'll go back to the beginning and play it again. So they got four lines of sound on only three lines of printed music. They saved space. Then if you look at the bottom part of the song, you'll notice it begins with um, a backwards repeat sign. And then if you drop down to the end, it ends with a repeat sign. And that means you're going to repeat that last part. And it is also four lines long. And each of those lines happens to end at the end of the written line also. So I hope that I didn't make it worse by trying to explain it. But um, just know that uh, it's, I wish there were two different words that we could use for a line of printed music and for a line of sound. But I don't think there are. So in the first line, which is the first four measures, there are two things that I especially want you to notice and that you can practice separately. One of them is there's an E note in that third measure. And it shows a zero, and then above that a four in parentheses. I forgot to mention, this music has finger numbers in it, and when I copied it and sent it to you, I didn't realize that. But maybe that will be helpful to you, I'm not sure. Anyhow, um, I would like you to play the fourth finger for that note. You, you have a smaller than average instrument, and you're playing your fourth finger well in tune um, right now. And so let's strengthen that fourth finger by giving it more practice at doing what it's starting to become very good at. So play the fourth finger there, not the open E string. And then in the last measure, which is not the last measure of the printed line, but the last measure of the line of music, 
um, you're going to have to cross a string without making a sound. And we did talk about this last night. You'll go from second finger, uh, low second finger, on the E string, which is the note is G. And you're going, your next note after that is also a G, but it's an octave lower, and it will be third finger on the D string. And so you need to stop your bow. Whoops. Here. You need to stop your bow, and this would be a good one to do as an exercise. Oops. <laughs> And the goal is to get so good at it that um, for the first week or so, it'll be a, a real stop there. But after doing it enough times, your brain will take over and without you thinking about it, it will stop the bow, move it, and then start it up again, and it'll become clean. But you have to do it many, many times slowly to get that imprinted on your brain. Okay, so that's the first line. After that, we have some pattern stuff. You go down, slur, down, up, down, slur, down, up, down, slur, down, up. And then you've got that da dum. It looks like a grace note. It's called a grace note, but they're playing it as a real note. Da -dum. So um, play it so that we can hear that note and um, the two notes together make up that last measure. At the end of that last measure there, which the last measure of the second line, you have two more measures in the written line and you have to lift your bow before you start because you've just ended on a down bow. The next note, third finger on the A string, is a D note and it indicates that you should play it on a down bow. That's that thing that looks like a staple, okay? And then you've got that same pattern, down, slur, down, up, down, up, up. So it starts pretty much the same. Yes, it starts exactly the same as the first two measures of the first line. And then dropping down to the third printed line, there's a fourth finger. Um, they give it as an option, but I'm telling you, because I'm bossy, I want you to play it with fourth finger. Um, so it's a down slur there, and then down, up, up. And that is the end of the second line of music. No, it's the end of the third line of music, sorry. And you can put a heavy mark there if you'd like. Then you have four measures left on the printed line. And you may have noticed that each of the first three lines was made up of four measures. And this one is two. That's what gives um, the rhythm and the feel of the end of a line. So you've got these four measures, and they are down, slur, down, up, down, slur, down, up, down, slur, and then a long note. As you end that part, and you're going to go back up to uh, the beginning of the tune, you have a repeat sign. When you go back up to the top, it indicates that they want you to start on a down bow. There's that staple again. But you have just ended on a down bow. The last note of this piece right before the repeat sign is a third finger um, down bow. And remember that half note with a dot after it means that it will last three counts. So, and this is in 3-4 time. Same as a waltz, um, it's actually a minuet, and your other two minuets, one and two, were also in 3-4 time. That's a part of uh, this type of dance. Then in the <clears throat> second part of the tune, there are several more things that you're going to have to deal with, and we'll wait and talk about those after you've got the first part pretty much under your belt. Let's see, there were a couple things I wanted to demonstrate. So I suggested that you could make um, an exercise of this one. 
Um, you can also make an exercise of, what was it? Oh, where you use the fourth finger. You have to move your third finger there, so you have to be clean about it. Now go to fourth finger instead of open E. Go to the open E there. Use the fourth finger. Open E. Okay. So make exercises out of any places that give you trouble. Um, you can talk to me. I think we're going to talk either Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever it's convenient for you. Just let me know and um, I will listen to you play Country Waltz. And um, if you have some questions on the first part of this song, you can ask them then. I hope this helps you. Bye. <laughs>